practice that. <laughs> it's uh, Sunday morning on Times Radio Breakfast. It's the 8th of January at 6.39. Thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, now to Iran, where two men have been hanged for killing a member of the security forces during protests against the government last year. Mohammed Madi Karami and Syed Mohammed Hosseini had appealed against their sentences, saying they'd been tortured into making false confessions. The UK Foreign Secretary James Cleverly has described the executions as abhorrent. Mariam Namazi is an Iranian-born writer and human rights activist and joins us this morning. Mariam, hello, welcome to the programme. Thank you very much. I think, first of all, can you just take us inside Iran, give us a glimpse into the current state of protest, of public feeling, of rebellion, and indeed of the response from the authorities. What is happening in Iran? Sure. I mean, I think one of the things uh, just earlier that was said is that uh, these two young men, one is 20, one is 21, um, Sayyid Mohammed Hosseini and Mohammed Mehdi Karami, they um, were uh, made to confess under brutal torture. They didn't have the right to attorney and actually they didn't have a right to appeal. And within weeks of being arrested uh, for uh, participating in either protests or attending the 40th anniversaries of um, previous protesters killed, uh, they have been executed. You know, so uh, if you look at the case of Mohammed Mehdi Karami, he actually didn't even get a chance to say goodbye to his parents. He was on a dry hunger strike demanding a lawyer when they took him out during morning uh, prayers and executed him. And so, uh, you know, to be very clear that it, in fact, it's the Basiji and the Iranian regime that's killed over 500 protesters, 18,000 protesters have been arrested, and there are many at risk of execution. And of course, we know very clearly that these are actions the regime is taking in order to try to suppress protests that have been ongoing since September 16th. And I'm sure your viewers, your, sorry, your listeners and viewers might have heard that there was a young Iranian Kurdish woman, Masa Amini, her, her Kurdish name is Gina. In Iran, Kurds can't use their Kurdish names or even speak Kurdish, uh, Kurdish or learn Kurdish in schools. Um, she was killed by the morality police for a few strands of hair because she was what they say improperly veiled. And so there have been mass protests across Iran and it's been led by young women and girls supported by men. Men have also been there along, alongside them uh, calling for not just reforms but for an end to theocracy and for what they say they want a normal life. Very bravely, we're seeing women and girls burning their hijabs, removing their hijabs, walking in the streets without compulsory veiling. And we can't, we mustn't forget that this is actually a crime in Iran. Yeah. People are arrested for it, beaten for it, as have many protesters been beaten for it. And so it's a very, very dangerous situation right now because the regime is trying to suppress these protests. They've killed people on the streets. They're arresting people. Uh, they're torturing them. And they've got over 40 people sentenced to execution, four have already been executed, and they plan to do a lot more. And of course, it's only via international support and solidarity will we be able to push back these executions and save people's lives. It is certainly remarkable bravery on the part of the protesters in the face of, of such uh, oppression in, in, in the context of these protests particularly. I, I wonder if I can get your thoughts on, on some analysis that suggests that the regime is actually appearing to be somewhat divided in, in how to respond to the protests because there seem to be waves of repression and then perhaps some sort of feeling of uh, conciliatory gestures to try to sort of quell the discontent. Is that is that a strategy or is that a sign of fragmentation, do you think? Uh, I think in a sense it's both. The, the, the regime has always tried to use uh, this sort of uh, fragmentation uh, as a way of um, quelling protests in Iran. For example, for many years it uh, there was the so-called Islamic reformist movement, the second Khordad movement, that was meant to act as a safety valve and, and, you know, to remove the pressure, the explosive pressure against the Islamic regime of Iran. So there is divisions, of course, within the regime about how to maintain its rule. And I think what we must remember, 
and what has always been the case is that it's any any sort of even what seems to be conciliatory gestures are there to silence and suppress and end the protest. So even, uh, for example, rumors that the morality police were going to be disbanded. Clearly, that wasn't the case. It isn't the case. Um, over the years, the regime has promised a moratorium of stoning, um, loosening of rules, reforms. None of that has been done or is possible in a theocracy because what, what people want and particularly what young people want, and this is, um, you know, um, a, a country where 70% of the population is under the age of 30 and anything people want to do from how to dress, from what music to listen to, to who to love, to how to think, it comes in direct con uh, contradiction and as a challenge to this regime. Mm. So I think we have to be very clear that if there seems to be any conciliations, these are one to dupe the public, particularly the global community, the international community, to dupe them, to say that changes are being made. And all the while, they're picking people off the street. A young uh, Iranian woman nurse, uh, uh, Aida Rostami, was beaten to death for helping wounded protesters. Sohail Arabi, he's a well-known Iranian atheist who was on death row uh, for many years on charges of blasphemy. He was released after pressure. He was in internal exile and they arrested him on Monday. They beat him so badly that he was taken straight to hospital after they arrested him. And now we were, we were looking for him. There was a hashtag saying, where is Sohail Arabi? Mm -hmm. And we found out that he's now in the uh, great Tehran uh, prison since Thursday. That's from Monday to Thursday, he was in hospital because of what they did to him. So they are picking people off, killing them. And there was a slogan, there is a slogan on the streets of Iran saying, if we don't end it now, we have to start hashtag stop executions in Iran, which is exactly what's happening. So we are, you know, calling on the international community, on the British government to take serious action. It is unethical. It is immoral. To, it is inhuman to watch people being killed uh, for the, the mere act of protesting and demanding basic freedoms that we take for granted here in Britain. Yeah. And the other thing too is it is self-defeating. We know that the Iranian regime is taking British Iranian hostages, like Nazanin Zafari Radcliffe, like Ashuri. We also know uh, in media reports that the Iranian regime has seriously threatened exiles here in Britain. I myself has, have faced threats and I'm in conversation with the police. We know that they're doing that both in Britain and in Iran. For how long is the British government going to just do condemnations mm -hmm. or even sanction only sections of the regime? The Revolutionary Guards have been sanctioned as a terrorist group, but actually the whole of the Islamic regime of Iran is a terrorist state particularly and primarily against the people of Iran, but also internationally. Yeah. The reality is that this women's revolution can change everything mm. if it's supported and defended. And I think that's what really the people of Iran are asking the British public to do. And there's a big protest today, January 8th, from Marble Arch going towards Trafalgar Square. That there will be tens of thousands of people calling for an end to executions and an end to the regime. And we hope people will join us today. Mariam, thank you very much indeed for speaking to us this morning. It's good to have you on the programme. Thank you. Thank you. That's Mariam Namazi, an Iranian-born writer and human rights activist. I think that last point, actually, this woman's movement could change everything if supported adequately, basically. Uh, that is what could make the position, I suppose, of the regime untenable, um, is the extent to which that support really grows, escalates, and gets loud and impossible to ignore.